Hey guys, welcome back to the Lottery Management 4 tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to open and close individual drawers like we see here. So we've got a chest of drawers here, and we're going to be able to open and close each individual one and play a sound effect at the same time and have it look great. So I'll show you what this is going to look like. So if we hit play, I'm just going to go into first person here, and then if I press E on an individual drawer, it's going to open. If I press it again, it will close. And these red lines are here just for testing. These can disappear afterwards, so we don't have to have those on. We can remove them but we can click on each individual drawer and it will open like so when you're looking at it and pressing E as well. And we can open more than one at the same time so we can open them all if we wanted. This is just what we're gonna make and it looks great. So I'll show you how to do that now. So what I'm gonna do first is create a new folder to keep this nice and organized. So I'm gonna right click, create a new folder. I'm just gonna call this drawers like that, open that up and then I'm gonna import everything that we need. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description down below to this 3D model of the drawers and the two sound effects which I'm using for the open and close. So like I say, I'll leave the links in the description down below for you to use those as well. So we can just drag and drop them in to import them, hit import all like so, and now we have those in there like that. So what I'm also gonna do is create another folder called mats just to keep this a little bit nice and organized, looking a little bit better. Move there like so. And then the next step after this is gonna to be to create our blueprint actor that we're gonna be using. So to do that, we're gonna right click, go to blueprint class and get an actor. And I'm going to name this Draws BP, but you can enter whatever you like, and then open that up straight away. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to minimize that and then select all of these. So actually, that, those shouldn't have been mats, but that's fine. So just select all of these static meshes that we have for the drawers. So this is going to include the actual drawer itself and then all the individual drawers which you can open. So select those, go back to the blueprint, and then add component and add static mesh, multiple assets. Now we have all of those in there, like so. What I'm going to do is just unparent these like that so they are all their own separate thing. So they have no parents like so. So that is now working great like that. So now straight away what we're going to do is just go over to the event graph here now. We're going to delete the begin overlap and event tick notes. And off of event begin play we're just going to enable input. So enable input like that with the player controller as get player controller. And this just allows us to actually use our interaction key or whatever we like in here. So we can compile that and that will actually make our interaction key as well. So I'm going to edit project settings and when this loads we're going to go down to input so input down here and then we're going to open the action mappings hit plus to create a new one and we're going to call this interact like so and you can set this to the e key the f key left mouse button anything you want and you can have multiple ones and this is also great for setting up key bindings later or using it on multiple consoles or anything like that this is just great and how to do that so you open that up like so and you can close that go back in the blueprint event graph here and we'll just right click and search the action mapping we just made I called mine interact like so out of the interact what we're going to do is we're going to cast to our character so mine is the third person character so cast to third person character this can be first third or anything that you've named it the object is going to be get player character like that and the reason we're doing this is so that we can access the camera location for our player. So then out of this, what we're going to do is come out of the execution node and we're going to line trace for objects. So line trace for objects down there like so. The object types, we're going to come out and we're going to make array with the array as world static like so. And now the start and end is basically where we want to start and end this line that we're going to draw. So the line trace is essentially we're drawing a line. So we want this to go from the player's camera location just in a straight line forward. So as third person character, we're going to get our camera. So for me, that's just the my FPP camera. So first person perspective, but you can just get your camera that you're using. And out of that, I'm going to get world location. So get world location like that and plug that into the start. Out of the camera again, I'm going to get the forward vector. So this is just the forward direction facing that the camera is. So when you've got the camera, it's gonna go straight out in front of the player. Come out of that, and we're going to get a multiply. So a vector multiplied by a float, and the float I'm gonna put as 500. This here is how long you want the line to be. So if you want the line to be shorter, set this to a value lower than 500. If you want it to be higher, set it to above 500. I've just chose 500 as that is what's good for me. And then out of the get world location again, what we're going to do is get an addition. So a vector plus a vector. I'm just going to add the multiplication together to that as well and put that in the end. And what that's doing is that's just appending it to make sure it's a straight line in front of the player. And so that is how we're going to be drawing the line. So it's going to start from the camera and then go 500 units in front of the camera and end there in a straight line. Then after this, what we want to do is come out of the return value of this line trace. We want to get a branch like so, plug that in there. And the out hit, we want to break hit result like so and open up the advanced settings there like that. Out of the hit component for the break hit result, what we want to do is cast to static mesh component and plug that into the true of the branch. So what this is gonna do is if this line trace hits an object, 
If this line trace hits an object, what it's going to do is see if it is a static mesh, and if it is a static mesh, it will fire off this code. If it isn't, it won't do anything. Then also, that's just reminded me, the array doesn't want to be world static, it wants to be world dynamic, because we want to be able to move these objects as well, so they need to be movable, hence world dynamic, not world static. So then back off of this cast here, what we want to do is as static mesh, we want to get relative location under the transform there. So get relative location, right click that and split the structure pin. And then we're going to come out of the X and we're going to get a greater than or equal to float. And I'm going to set this to 30. Now the reason I'm doing this is because that's how far out I want the draw to go. So if we can go on here, you see that on the X it's going out by 30. because I want it to go there, so I've moved it by 30 on the X. So set that to be how far you want it to be. And I'm doing this here as well is so that then if it is greater than that, it's going to go backwards. So it's going to reverse this and go back in instead. So then out of the return value for that, that's just going to go into another branch with that going into the cast like so. And actually, I'm also going to get a not as well. Sorry. So get a not Boolean out of that. And that then goes into the branch like so. So if it is not like this, so you could have used a less than or equal to but I just want to do it this way instead. So then out of this, this is where we're also going to play the sound. So out of the true of this branch, we're going to play sound at location like so. And this sound is going to be the open as this top one is how we're opening the draw. So this is going to be open draw sound effect like so. And then we're going to duplicate that, plug that into false. So play sound location off of false as well. And this will be the close draw like so. The location, what we're going to do is just get actor location get actor location like so and plug that into both of them and it can just be self as it's just going to be where the draw is and the target can be self as this is just going to be where the draw is so that works perfectly like so so now we're going to play the sound effect and then what we want to do is actually move the draw in and out so to do that what we're going to do is i'm actually going to promote this to a variable so we don't have to have loads of blue lines everywhere so right click as static mesh component promote to variable and i'm going to call this static mesh ref like so and just plug that in there like that just to keep it nice and organized and looking a lot neater so do that like so and then come back over here and we're going to get that reference so we're going to call that so get static mesh reference like so and we're going to get world location so this is going to get the location of the static mesh that the line trace has hit so the player is looking at just move it up a bit like that and what we're going to do is we're going to right click the return value and split the structure pin and then we're going to create two new variables as well. So hit the plus variable down here, and this is going to be called the start location. And as I call it location, we obviously want this to be a vector because that is the location variable. And then we're going to create another variable and call this end location like so. But you can call this in location and out location, start and end, anything like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to set those. So come off the play sound location and just set these variables here. So set start location and set end location. And what we're going to do is also right click on these return values and split the structure pins of those as well as we want to mess about with the x, y and z individually. So for the start location, the x, y and z are all going to be the same. So plug those all in like that. And then for the end location, the y and the z are going to be the same, but the x we want to add 30. So again, that's because like I said earlier, I want to be moving this outwards on the x like so. So we can do that like that. So if I then come out of the X and add a float plus a float like so, and then if I add 30, we can then plug that in there like so. And actually I've just thought if we don't do world location, but we get relative location, so get relative location like that, and then split structure pin and do the exact same thing, this means this would then work no matter which way it is facing. So if we rotate this in the world, this should still work. So that now is a lot better. Just suddenly remember to do that. So now we've got that working like so. So now we're going to set the start and end locations for our draw. I'll just add these reroll notes here just to make this a little nicer to look at like so. And now what we want to do is actually move it. So we're going to come out of the set end location. I'm going to add a timeline, add timeline like so. And I'm just going to call this open draw and this is going to go from play from start not play and what we're going to do is double click that to open it up and we're going to add a float track this i'm just going to call open draw again doesn't matter too much and the length i'm going to set to 0.5 so this is how long you want it to take to open the draw i want this to be very quick so just half a second like that and i'm going to right click on the graph add key to curve float time zero value zero so this is a very start add key again time 0.5 value one so that's then at the very end like so so that is now our timeline set up so we compile and close that and now to actually make it move what we're going to do is come out of the open draw float track we made and get a lerp vector so we lerp for a vector like so the a and b are going to be our start and end location variables that we made so a is going to be our start b is going to be our end 
as we want to move the draw between our start and end locations. And then what we want to do is just then get another reference to our static mesh here. So static mesh reference, and we want to set relative location. So set relative location like so, and plug that to the update with the new location as a return value from the lerp, like so. And so now what this is gonna do is when we press the line trace, if it hits a static mesh in this blueprint, what it's gonna do, if it hasn't been opened already, it's gonna play the sound and open it. And then if we have opened it already, we're gonna do this but reversed to close it. And also one other thing on the line trace here, we need to untick ignore self so it will actually be using and looking at the static meshes in this blueprint as well. So now if we come back over here, and like I say, we're just gonna reverse this for the closing. So to do that, we can simply just copy and paste all this. So select all this, copy and paste down here like so. I'm just gonna move this down to be underneath instead, just to give us a little bit more space like that. And then again, plug in the set into that play sound there like so. And the only thing I'm gonna change here is this isn't gonna be plus 30, this is gonna be minus 30 on the X like so. So minus 30, and again, you can customize that to be on the axes, which is for you and your mesh, and however far you want it to go out. And so now that should work, everything else should be the exact same. So if we compile and save that, go back into here, we can drag and drop this blueprint in. So drag and drop the blueprint in there, and if we hit play, we can test this out. So I'm gonna go into first person, and then if you see we hit that, that's gonna move, which is obviously not what we want, and that's because we need to change that static mesh to not be movable, we want that to be static. So that one can't move. So now if we try this again, this should work. So we hit it, it hits a draw, it's then gonna open up the draw that we want. So we're pressing E on the specific draw we want to open, and it's gonna open it, play the sound effect, and if we press it again, it will close it. And like I say, we can open up all of these if we want to. Now if you press it too quickly, it's gonna break and do that. So an easy way to fix that is just make it so the player can't spam click this. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is just right at the very start here, I'm gonna get a branch. So if I just select all that and move it over, I'm gonna hold down B, left click, get a branch, plug that in there, and I'm gonna create a new Boolean variable. So hit a variable here and call this one can open question mark and make this a Boolean like so. Default value of true and plug that into the branch there like so. And then what I'm gonna do is straight after this branch actually, I'm gonna set this to be false. So set that to be false like so. And then at the end over here, off of finished of these timelines, what I'm gonna do is set this again, but to be true now. So this means that we can only open the drawer again once we've finished opening another drawer. So now if we try this again, we can see that this should now work a lot better. So I can't open another drawer until that one's finished meaning we now don't get that glitch again anymore. So again, this just means that we can now open and close these all perfectly, so we can't open one when we're opening another one. But as it's just half a second, it's very quick, the player shouldn't notice. And this just now works a lot better, and it doesn't break or glitch. You can see as well, if we rotate this, so it's facing this way, this should still work as it was relative, not a world, so that still works like so. And as you saw, that was a bit glitchy. When we rotated it, it was going further one out. So if we change this from 30 down to 25, that should work a little bit better as it was just a little bit glitchy when we rotate it. But now we can open and close these perfectly like so, no matter which way it is facing and where we place it. And then also one other final touch, sorry, is off of the false of this branch, we want to set can open to true as well. Because otherwise, if we press E and we don't hit something, then we're not gonna be able to open it again. So if we then set that like so, we'll be able to hit E here, and then we can now open and close these like so. So I think that'll be it for this video, as we've done everything we want to do. We've created this set of drawers, which we can open and close each individual drawer as we like, and it plays a sound effect for opening and closing. And this looks and sounds perfect. So like I say, we can open each individual one, and then also you can put something in there which the player can then pick up as well, if you would like. So that works perfectly. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.